secfans.com. I'm going to talk about another interesting bowl game. We're going to do a real quick one. Some of these, we don't have a lot of time to dedicate a whole show, a whole 30-minute hour show to, but we run these models just because they're interesting, especially when there's interesting matchups like South Carolina-Michigan. So we're going to talk about this game real quick. Um, South Carolina-Michigan, an interesting matchup because we've seen both of these teams sort of stub their toe uh, down the stretch. Had some highs and lows all year. I would say that South Carolina is probably coming into this with a little more momentum, even with the way they lost to Clemson at the end of the year. Um, so let's talk real quick about what the model says. Again, this is not our normal video, but we want to give South Carolina fans some love. We love you all a lot, and uh, so we ran this model. Get into the model. Let me know what it says, and we'll go from there. So 10-second spiel. It's a per-play mock per play model that takes how you did against your opponents versus how your opponents fared against everybody else and derives some sort of comparative statistics to say how, how good you really are relative to your competition. One of those statistics is uh, percent of opponent averages you allow. In other words, not how many yards per play do you allow or how many yards per attempt, but how many, what percentage of your opponent's yards per attempt or yards per carry are you allowing? Uh, and, I think what's interesting this year is there's a big perception that South Carolina is very, very good defensively, or at least quite good under Muschamp. Really not all that true. Uh, they, they're giving up 89% of opponent rushing averages and 94% of opponent passing averages. Really 90 to 95 is, uh, I would say, average, above average. 95 to 100% is, is perfectly average, and that's like nationally. Uh, 90 to 95% is solid. Uh, really, they are pretty good against the run at 89%. Just, and I do mean just kind of pretty good. And 94% is basically perfectly average against the pass. Uh, the, a lot of stuff's been hidden statistically because they are one of the fewest. Um, they, they run the, among the fewest number of plays of anyone in college football. And when you do that on a consistent basis, uh, you can look pretty good statistically defensively because you just don't play that many plays and that's kind of where South Carolina is now uh Michigan uh Michigan's pretty darn good I mean 80 percent of opponent rush averages 85 percent of opponent pass averages that that's not elite you need, you really need to be below 80 percent on either number to be elite uh what that really is I would say is very good against the run and good against the pass um but I, I think one of the more interesting things in this model for the past three weeks has been that South Carolina has broken our model and they did that in the their scoring has been so inconsistent that when they had worse yardage, they scored more points. When they had better yardage, they scored fewer. Uh, this was because we, we spent a lot of time on this, actually, trying to figure out why the heck this was happening. But the biggest theory we had is that when they were struggling offensively, they took more risks defensively and offensively that led to more turnovers and points. Um, some people have said, well, but they had a shorter field, so that hurt their offense. But remember, we do per play statistics. So we're not looking at total yardage. We're looking at your, you know, your per carry average. I don't really care if you have to go 40 yards or 100. That's why we look at statistics this way. Uh, the point is they, when they were doing well offensively, they just under Muschamp have kind of played a really vanilla style offense that doesn't generate explosive plays and scored. And when they struggled, then they took shots and they actually were more effective offensively. The notable thing is that was the past three weeks and against Clemson, Really, Florida, Clemson, Georgia, they performed the way you should expect for their yardage to such an extent that they finally fixed our model. Um, and they do actually trend now with yardage. Uh, so that's kind of a fun caveat for any South Carolina fans that have been following us. But uh, the prediction that comes out of this is Michigan should average about 4.9 yards per play by our projection. Uh, South Carolina should average about 4.6. Uh, really, neither team should be able to run the ball effectively. Only three yards per carry for South Carolina, four yards per carry for Michigan. Uh, that's pretty painful. Both teams should average around six yards per attempt. Also, not very good. Uh, in the score prediction, which looks at your historical produ your historical production with similar yardage, uh, predicts Michigan to have 20 points and South Carolina to have 18. So before I turn it back over to Daniel, the thing I'll note here is I think there's probably a perception, probably by a lot of Big Ten fans, that they're going to run away from this game. Uh, it wouldn't shock me. I, it, it's really not fair. South Carolina has stayed in the game with everyone but the most elite teams they've played. And really, 
the way you thump South Carolina was by having an excellent offense because they can't keep pace. But if you want to play a grinded out football game, Will Muschamp has been very, very good at playing those this season and has win more than his fair share of them. So um, I, I, you know, even though Michigan in our model is favored by two, I think it's very notable that this is really a coin flip game. And anytime you're scoring 24 points or less, we talk about this all the time. You're really talking about a couple turnovers or a fumble or one fumble recovery, one, uh, you know, one pick six because determining the outcome of the game. This is a, this is a very tight game that could absolutely go either way. Um, we're talking in the past about how it's hard when there's not enough data points from teams from other conferences playing one another. Um, and yes, we actually have one this, this time with, with Florida. Um, but what's interesting about both of these teams is they've basically beaten everyone that most teams could beat and then lost to all of the really good teams on their schedule. Um, so that that's what makes it hard for me. Um, I think Michigan, and it's tracking with the numbers, I think Michigan's better defensively uh, than South Carolina, which is, again, like you said, maybe not to expectation for what we think about when we think about South Carolina. But I do kind of like the Jake Bentley factor in this game. Uh, I think they have a little more at quarterback. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give my gut score. I'm not wild about this matchup for South Carolina. Um, so you think it's a coin flip game. Um, I think Michigan's got just more talent than South Carolina. And I think when you've got teams that are this close together in terms of what they've shown on paper throughout the year, um, I got to go with the team that has blown out more teams that they should beat. So Rutgers, Maryland, you know, Minnesota, these types of teams, they've just walked them. Yes, they lost to Penn State and Michigan State and others, but they're walking these other teams. And South Carolina can't really say that. Um, so give me Michigan 24, South Carolina 21. I hate to do it. I love the Gamecocks, but uh, but I got to go, go with Michigan on this one. Yeah, I, I'm not too different now. I, I, I'm actually going to pretty much stick with the model. I think it's like 21-17 Michigan over South Carolina. But, you know, there's some positives here. It's possible that Rico Dattle comes back for South Carolina. It's possible that Crosby comes back. One of the big things we've talked about with Michigan this year is if you can get to the second level against them, you can kind of break away. And we talked about it in some of our previous videos. You talked about the Jake Bentley factor. Michigan has the potential to give up explosive plays. They tend to either give you nothing or everything. And it's really not a bend, but don't break defense. It's more, it's more a bend and sometimes break defense, if that makes sense. And most of the time they're successful, not giving up anything, but um, they do have issues tackling in the, in the second level, I think quite badly uh, if you can get back there. So that to me means that this is a very volatile game. And I think it actually could be quietly one of the more fun as much as you think it's going to be a defensive slugfest and could be really ugly, and it could be, I think it could also be one of the more fun games of the season in that uh, you could have two or three big drives that sort of go back and forth and uh, something wild could end up uh, causing the result. So what was your, your gut score again? Uh, 21-17, Michigan. All right, y'all. Anything else in this game? Nope. <clears throat> All right, Michigan fans, South Carolina fans, you know what to do in the comments. Give us your score predictions. Give us your MVP. Uh, have it. Have it out. Just back your points up with data. Thanks so much, y'all.